I'm about to give you the roadmap to changing your backhand for good. Hey, my name is Ian. I'm the head pro here at EssentialTennis.com. And the video you're about to see is really special because it's footage taken from private one-on-one -on -one coaching that we did with a student last month here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Corey flew out to see us from Los Angeles, California. Uh, he's already a really solid player, but he has aspirations of competing nationally in his age group, as well as becoming a strong 5.0 player. So during our time together, we took fundamentally important parts of his backhand swing and changed them, same elements that you probably recognize about your own swing. And we took his backhand from looking like this to looking like this. Here's how we did it. All right, that's, that's good, that's good. Uh, these are swings that I shot uh, earlier this morning. Wow, same thing with my forehand, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same thing. That's exactly, it's, ex it's exactly it's the same thing. It's a mirror image of it, yeah. <laughs> right? So flat, yeah. that contact, ball is gone. So see how you're manip manipulating yeah. the racket yeah. face to, to try to yeah, kind of close over it. Yeah. And so this is, what this is doing is it's making your follow through quite shallow. Mm -hmm. So I'm not you're, you're, driving through. It's the through part of it, it's also the height part of it. Mm -hmm, yeah. your, your hands are never getting above shoulder height because you're steering mm -hmm. the, the racket face over immediately. All the same fundamental things that we saw with the forehand side, we see here up, yeah, yeah. His, with, the, with the hands leading the, the racket head and the racket face upwards and around. You'll notice the length of his follow through also compared to yours, mm -hmm. um, very, very different because of that right. tight kind of turn. I mean, uh, this is probably a f like a 90 degree rotational difference mm -hmm. between lo looking where the butt cap of your racket is mm -hmm. finishing. And this is on an imbalance you know, shot that's in your strike zone, finishing here versus Brian. Okay, he's at your point here. Mm -hmm. And he continues it all the way, Yeah, way up. I mean, look where it's all the way up here. Yep. Right here. Oh. So, Yes, the ball is gone, but what this shows is a the, the direction of swing uh, and the looseness of his body mm. is leading the racket up to this point. So this doesn't, you know, in and of itself, add miles per hour or, or re revolutions per minute to the ball. Right, but it shows where it started. But it gives end. it gives fluidity, which mm -hmm. then gives potential for those things, uh, whereas yours is kind of choked off by that that quick rotation. Yeah turning over of the, of the so racket. So I still want to turn it over, but I want to way up here, right? Like, it's the exact same thing as on your forehand side. It's the exact same yeah. thing. Yeah, so we want, we want the racket face to remain on plane. We talked about that. As, I, how's my angle of my racket? Um, good, yeah, I, I like your, your general like, setup and your approach mm -hmm. to the ball, I think is good. So the angle of my racket is like, so it's more the follow through than the, where the rack, because naturally I feel like my racket strings are closed, closed more on my backhand than my forehand. At the end of the day, yeah, on a ground stroke, mm -hmm. on a top spin or a drive ground stroke, we want the racket face to be pretty much dead perpendicular. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at, you know, top professional players, it's flat, flat. give or take like a Couple degrees. degree or two. Uh -huh. Like if, if they're really close, the ball is really high, maybe you'll see it more closed than that. Right. But from back here on the baseline, it's yeah. pretty much okay. all right okay. in line with okay with perpendicular. Yeah, like so, that, the, right? so the main things are keeping the racket face on, on edge. Uh, I'm sorry, not on, on, uh, on plane uh, the whole way through. And then just like on your forehand side, we need to use your, your body a little bit more actively, your, your back yeah, shoulder like especially, and your core to, yeah. to guide the racket and lead the racket through contact and across your body to your right side. Because okay. right now you're very yeah. you're forearm and handsy mm -hmm. uh, coming across and that's what's making you restricted and low percentage. Okay. Now that we've identified the most foundational, important elements to focus on in Corey's backhand, we're gonna start leading him through a series of progressions. Starting from the most basic, simple way of hitting his backhand so that he can really be present and aware of what he's doing, and then slowly layering elements upon elements after that. 
You may have already seen the forehand video with Corey where one of his big misconceptions was how to hit topspin. And that was present here with his backhand as well, trying to turn the racket face over the top of the ball. And here's how we helped him get away from that. Okay, so uh, let's start with, uh, with shadow swings. Uh, we keep everything else the same, okay. but just like on the forehand side, from contact on, we're gonna keep the racket face perpendicular to the court surface and bring it up, up and around. Right yep. Yep. Okay. So from contact on, it's just like on the forehand side, you're gonna feel like it's mainly uh, coming from the back of your shoulder, pushing through and then up and, and around instead of using your hand to try to manipulate the racket face over the top of the ball. Uh, so let me see like three or four slow shadow swings in a row. Keeping the racket face perpendicular, yep. And using your, your, the back of your left shoulder to lift and come across. Um, all right, so a couple of feeds now, and we're gonna do the same thing as on the forehand side. We're going for a curved shot that lands at the cone or in front, okay. and that's crossing the net by four or five feet. Okay. So these should be real slow, relaxed, and we're just trying to find that combination of angle of face and direction of, of swing. Okay. So a combination of lift and flat racket face. So we need more vertical direction and much more closed racket face. So overall, so far, your swing is still too lateral to get the shape of shot that we're looking for. Okay, good. Now, keep that same direction of swing and just adjust the angle of the strings. So don't swing any flatter just change the angle of the strings at contact. Uh-huh, now we're starting to get the curve. Now do more of both. More, yep, more closed with the racket and vertical swing. Yep, yep, getting there. Good. Let's get a little bit more of an arc. Yep, there we go, there we go. That's what I wanna see. That same height, that same shape. Yep, nice shot. This I feel is, is actually a little bit more tricky because um, you're, you really want to hinge your left hand uh -huh. forward yeah. uh, through, through the ball. <laughs> right, yeah, you're, so you're going from here, which actually, looking at the video, you drop your racket head really nicely. Yeah, and so it should, it should be quite natural for you to go from here to around, but you, what your habit is, is you come up to contact and then go. So it's like two conflicting directions of swing. Mm -hmm. so yep. Yep. So your yeah. setup is like very well suited for circular, right. but your follow through is very okay. linear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to uh, round it out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Nice. Good. Awesome. Okay. Let's go back to no man's land uh, with the feed and with the target, please. So with the, as we move further back, um, also just like the forehand side, on these really short ones, I, I don't blame you at all. I mean, it's not a lot of space to work with. Uh -huh. So your tendency is to get a little bit handsy. Right. Uh, yeah, try to on the short ones, I don't, I don't mind that. Yeah. As we get further, I just want you to be aware, right. as we get further and further back, I want you to focus more on, on the lifting and the driving with your back left shoulder, the back of your left shoulder. Okay, let's see more curve. Good swing though. Yep, that's a minimum height there. Nice job, that's what I wanna see. Yep, awesome, good Corey. Look at the depth yeah. there on that drop, holy cow. And then up. That's it. That makes sense, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I mean, you now you're swinging. The right trajectory. So like if, if you think about it, all, all this follow through is, is just a continuation. Yeah, to make sure that I'm driving up so it comes down. Exactly. Come down if you don't drive up. <laughs> right. Visually, it just, mm -hmm. doesn't that make a whole lot more sense? Yeah. Rather yeah. than coming to contact and then, and then yeah. turning it forward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice job. Cool. So watch it in uh, full speed. Yeah, much smoother. Wait. Still have a little, you can see a little, a little oh, bit of a hiccup residual. in there. Yeah, 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 but it'll smooth out as mm -hmm. we keep going. 
Yeah. That was way better. Nice job. <laughs> nice job. All right. Um, Corey's, you're going to stay there. Corey's going to move back to the baseline. Um, let's keep it in. Let's keep it down the line, please. Uh, a couple shadow swings, please. Keeping everything on plane. Smooth, continual uh, lift with that left shoulder across your right side. Real slow to start off. Good, good shape, good shape. Yep. Nice, Corey. Now that Corey's overall direction of swing is more fundamentally sound, I start to work with him a little bit on his overall amount of rotation, how well he's using the big parts of his body. Doing a good job of this is how high level players are able to create effortless power through both, both sides, their forehand and their backhand ground stroke. So this is really a big cherry on top for him once we've already gone through and identified most of the big problem areas. All right, good. Okay, so just like on the forehand side, now we're going to add length of swing. So mm -hmm. we have the, the slot that we're following now on the way up towards the ball. Uh, we're, we're now tracing a circular path instead of kind of half circular, half linear. Now we're going to finish just like we did on the forehand side with uh, your butt cap pointing now to the right. Yep. And so if you want to get my hips into it more too. Honestly. So it's allowing your body as a whole to rotate more. It's also using your hands a little bit more loosely to allow them to wrap around your body. So uh, show me uh, three slow shadow swings, please, where you finish in that position. Yep. Good. You're doing it. You're doing more of the work with your body right now yeah. than what you should have to. Um, I feel like your your hands and your, and your arms defi over. definitely could relax a little bit more. Okay, you can do more of it with your hands coming around. Yep, that's it, Corey. That's it. Good shape there, Corey. Close the face a little bit. That's really nice. It's really nice. Um, more so the racket that I want to point out, though. Uh, I think Brian's a good um, example here, technique-wise. Um, see his racket coming up and across and through mm -hmm. and finishing about here. Mm -hmm. And I'm you're, down. you're continuing um, to twist the yeah. racket quite a bit more, like well, 90 degrees more than, yeah. So think of this more as, um, uh, go ahead, show me a follow through again, please. So think of this, this direction more so as this way and this way, circularly, circularly uh, as opposed, to, right, exactly, as opposed okay. to continuing to, to twist the racket head around. Okay. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. In, in fact, give me a couple of those shadow swings. What you just did looks a lot like, like Djokovic and every other world-class two-hand backhand right now. So I want you to look at your follow through on the next one. Just hold it for me. Hold it and look at it. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, let's see That's it. That's good, right? Let's see it continue to. Yeah, I want to see further? the. Yeah, so I'd love to see. I'd love that, to see this. That way. Yep, yep. <laughs> continue to look until you get three in a row. All right, good, good. That's two. Here, check out that uh, that last one, just so so you can see what's uh, what's going on here. <laughs> can, you, can you see how it's supposed to continue mm -hmm. in that in that mm -hmm. direction? That's nice, by the way. Look at that. That's really smooth transition now up to around. look at that. That's really nice. But then right here, you're like, eh, and then I go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Yep, that was, that was pretty continuous all the way there. Good, good. Starting to get there pretty smoothly now. Good. Keep going. Good. Nice job. What you're about to watch next is something that you're not going to see very often. Corey started to regress a little bit. 
And when I say you're not going to see this very often, what I mean by that is not many people are going to show you this process. But this is real life when you start working on making fundamental improvements to your swing technique. I started pushing Corey along a little bit too quickly in how many different things that we were focusing on. And he started falling back onto some of his old habits, which is totally natural. But as a coach, as a teacher, or as somebody who may be guiding themselves through the improvement process, it's really important to pay attention to when you start going back to old habits so that you can then take a step back, be more aware of what the first changes were that we worked on, the most important changes, and then consolidate on those before actually moving forward onto other things. It's most of the way there. Started getting a little bit off track there with the, uh, with the finish. Uh -huh. I, I may have, okay. may have progressed you a little bit fast. Uh, so show me a couple of, of shadow swings, please. So for the next like 30 seconds, I just want you to focus on the shape of the ball, okay. and we're just going to recreate that same, okay. that same shape, but four or six feet over the top of the net, and at same depth as the uh, as the cone. More vertical acceleration. A little bit more upward swing. There we go. Yep, that's it. Let's just see a couple more like that. Yep, that's it. Good. Okay, back to the baseline and, and same thing. J just focus on the shape of the shot. Awesome. That's really nice. That's really nice. Good shape and good smooth transition from the bottom to the top. Now that Corey has a solid understanding and he's also starting to demonstrate that he can execute these new swing mechanics having to do with path of his racket, the angle of his racket face, and also how big his follow through is. Now we're gonna start making things a little bit more real life by challenging him with a rally back and forth. And even though this is a cooperative rally, he's now having to try to manage all of these different new things at the same time. And we would only push him to this point if I felt really confident that he had a good solid awareness of when he was doing these new things right and when he was not. Nice job. <clears throat> Really nice, good. Great, great. Excellent shape on that. I think you're going to be happy with it. Looks like a nice bag, doesn't difference. it? <laughs> yeah. Big difference, much smoother. Yeah. Much more natural. Yeah. Cool. And just for. Uh, that's that's, that, looks, that looks really nice. Let me show you an earlier one just for contrast. Uh -huh. um, just because I, like, yeah. I like students uh -huh. to it's good. take a second to pat themselves yeah. on the back. Like that. <laughs> it's like a totally, a totally different swing. It's pretty amazing when you watch it for yourself. Yeah. yeah. So just awesome. do, do that one a bunch okay. more. Do that one, just do that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. All right, you're fixed. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Nice job. Corey did an amazing job throughout this process and he's already made some big changes, some big improvements in his knowledge, his ability to execute at a higher level with a higher quality of swing. But it's vital to understand, especially for all of you out there watching, that this is just the beginning for him. This is not the end. Being able to execute for a couple minutes or even a couple of hours after learning the new swing is just the start. And that's because creating new habits takes time. And when we're talking about becoming a fundamentally better player, that's really what it takes, is taking your old habits, whatever they happen to be. For Corey, it was misunderstanding with direction of his swing, the angle of his racket path, the length of his follow through, all of those old habits, 
he can now correctly do something different, but before it becomes automatic and unconscious, and he can do it without thinking about it, it's gonna take some time. So we wrote a custom action plan for him to follow when he got home. He's working through that and continuing to see great improvements. So kudos to Corey for putting himself out there, for uh, making big improvements and continuing on that path of focus, intention, and really have a per having a purpose behind each of his practice repetitions. If you'd like to join us for a similar experience here in Milwaukee, you can shoot me an email to ian at essentialtennis.com. That's ian, I-A-N, at essentialtennis.com. We don't have a lot of spaces on our calendar, but if, you, if you're a good fit, then maybe we can make something work. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and click like. If you have any comments or questions about anything that you saw us work through with Corey, or maybe any of the other two uh, videos, we already have published one on Corey's forehand, one on his serve, leave those down below. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and good luck with your tennis.